Today we're primarily going to be talking about the short circuit time constant method uh, to find the frequency response of an amplifier. But before we do that, I wanted to make a few notes on the differences between P-type transistors and N-type transistors. So the main differences uh, can all be boiled down to if we know the equations well for an N-type uh, transistor, we can simply reverse the uh, uh, voltages, uh, the node voltages, for a P and P transistor and uh, use very similar equations. So when we're looking at an NPN transistor, for instance, we know that the current in the NPN transistor, IC, is given by IS times E to the VBE over VT. When we look at the PNP, we simply reverse the uh, base and emitter voltages and have an expression that looks like the following, ISE to the VEB over VT. When we start looking at MOS transistors, we can write the equations for an NMOS transistor in the triode region. And we know this well as ID is equal to mu n c ox times w over l times v g s minus v t the threshold voltage times v d s minus v d s squared over two in saturation we know that this equation becomes i d is equal to mu n c ox over two times W over L times VGS minus VT squared times 1 plus lambda times VDS. This is our channel length modulation parameter. For PMOS, we reverse the subscripts, so GSs become SGs and so on and so forth. So in the triode region, ID is equal to mu P C ox times W over L times VSG minus VT times VSD minus VSD squared over 2. And in saturation, the equation becomes mu P C ox over 2 times W over L times VSG minus VT squared times 1 plus lambda times VSD. So all we have to do is reverse the subscripts and just memorize one equation uh, or one set of equations for the uh, n-type devices and then uh, the PMOS devices become relatively apparent. From a small signal uh, operation perspective, everything remains the same. The common emitter gain, for instance, is the same for a PNP transistor as it is for an NPN transistor. Next, we'll look at short circuit time constant. 